Hello and welcome, I'm Davis DeWitt, and in this episode of Null Byte, we'll be combining LoRa boards with camera speed lights in order to get a practical test of just how far this technology can go. The heart of this project is going to be this LoRa module that I've added on to the back of my USB Nugget. This is going to allow me to do some rapid testing, and thanks to this OLED monitor, we can check our signal strength when we receive a packet. One of the most popular applications for LoRa modules is Meshtastic, which is a very capable and long-range communication platform. For the purposes of this video, though, I want to think a little outside the box. So using a camera speed light, we're going to get a visual indicator of just how far our range is using these LoRa modules. Before we get into the build and testing phase, I want to quickly run over what makes up LoRa technology and how it works. Granted, there are a ton of videos already available, so I'll keep this brief to just go over the basics. LoRa stands for long range, and the way this technology works is compared to a Wi-Fi signal, which operates at 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, these have a large amount of bandwidth in exchange for less range. But by dropping our radio frequency down to the sub gigahertz range, we can now get a much longer distance of transmission at the cost of bandwidth. Now the actual frequency that your LoRa module will transmit at is gonna be somewhere in this range, depending on your region. Be careful when you're setting your LoRa transmitter because you don't wanna be using a frequency that is illegal in your region. Now one of the main benefits of LoRa technology is in IoT applications, and this is because it requires very little power and can give you really good range in order to transmit data back to a central hub. Plus, you're not sending your data over the internet, so this adds another layer of security to whatever setup you have for your IoT network. Best of all, in the United States at least, you don't need a license in order to operate in the LoRa spectrum. One of the other major applications of LoRa technology is Meshtastic, and this communication relies on using every single node in the network to send and receive packets. So this allows you to get data extremely long distances without relying on cellular service. Now that we know how LoRa technology works, I wanna create a test so that I can visually see just how far these radios work in a practical setting. It was finally time for the fun part, and the first step was to locate the remote trigger port on my strobe light so I could short the two pins and set off the flash. With that, I could then hack apart the trigger cable and wire it into a relay that would be controlled by our LoRa module. On the code side, I'm just running a simple CircuitPython script on the USB nugget that initializes the LoRa radio and then listens for pings from the transmitter. Once the LoRa radio receives a ping, it pulls one of the GPIO pins high that triggers the relay connected to our camera flash. A cool way to make sure your LoRa modules are actually transmitting is to either use a software-defined radio, or for those of you with a flipper, you could just tune it to the same frequency and check it that way. Now that all the backend work is done, it's finally time to answer the most important question, which is, does this even work? So I have my LoRa transmitter here, and on the other end is our LoRa receiver. So whenever it receives the packet, it's gonna set off this relay here, and that should, in theory at least, set off our strobe light. So I'm going to test this, and that that's pretty promising. Well, we're off to a pretty good start. However, this is the workbench, and there's not a lot going on between this receiver and this transmitter. So in the real world, the question is gonna be when you put buildings in the way, when you put other wireless devices in the way, is it still gonna be able to perform? So what I think I'm gonna do is take all of this setup and to really test this, put it all the way somewhere far away, and then see how far we can trigger this and get it to still work. The location I've chosen for this experiment is a pedestrian bridge that offers an uninterrupted view all the way through downtown. From here, we'll be able to see the camera flash get triggered at any point along the street below. Okay, so it's finally time for a big test, and we're out here at night where we can hopefully see the flash work in real time. Now we have our transmitter and we have our receiver, so what's next is we're gonna go set up our flash setup and then slowly increment our distance away from it and see if it works every single time. So let's go get everything all set up. All right, so everything is all booted up, and what we're gonna do now is slowly work our way farther and further away. So if this flash goes off, we'll know that our trigger system is working, and we can measure our distance by seeing how far down this long stretch of road we can go before we lose connection. Now, granted, we are in a downtown area, so we're probably gonna lose a bit of range, but the goal is, with single line of sight, how far can we go? We're gonna do our first test, and we're only one block away, so we're just gonna see if at one block we can still trigger our flash system. So. We're gonna go ahead and it's gonna pop off right up there. And let's see, maybe. <laughs> oh, I did see it get triggered. Okay, there we go. 
hopefully you got that. So looks like our first test works. Um, little hiccups, but we're now gonna go a second block. We're gonna do two city blocks and we're gonna see if we still have reception there. All right, it's now almost two o'clock in the morning. We're moving to our second setup now and we're already at negative 91 dB on our signal strength. So we'll see how quickly this degrades and who knows, we might not even be able to make it four blocks. Now, granted, if we're out in the middle of nowhere, giant open field, we might have better luck, but this is a practical example. Not everybody lives in open fields, so that's why I'm curious to see what's our signal strength and what's the LoRa range in a practical application. So here we are, two city blocks later. We're now gonna see if we still have reception, so we're gonna go ahead and start sending packets out and see. Oh, there we go. So that's our flash. So it looks like we still have reception. We'll find out, <laughs> that's really fun. We'll find out what our signal strength is, but for now, we're gonna go another city block and see how much reception we have there. In the interest of time, we're actually gonna start jumping a little bit further ahead in blocks. We're now at four blocks, so we're doubling from our last distance, and we're now gonna see if we still have our trigger distance. So, I'm gonna start setting this off. Wow, we still have, we still have trigger distance. That's amazing, that's so cool. We have now hiked a mile away from our flash setup, so this is gonna be the big test. I don't even know if we can see it from here, but we're gonna try this out, and obviously we have the other camera set up, so hopefully we'll see if we can receive any packets. So let's start sending out some and I don't even think I can see the bridge from here. Actually, you know what? Let's call the other camera and let's see if they're receiving any of these. Hello, we're troubleshooting. Okay, I'm sending packets now. Are you receiving any? I can't see from here. Are you guys receiving any of these? Nope, we're not getting anything. At this point, it looks like the last received signal was negative 95 dB and that was at the last test site. Oh, okay. All right, this looks like it might be our maximum range. So I think we should start walking back and testing and see where the limit is and where it drops out. Does that work for you guys? Yeah, that sounds good. Cool, all right, we'll start heading back to you guys. I've now walked backwards two blocks. So we are six blocks away from our original setup. So let's see if we can now trigger our light from here. Okay, so we still have range. We might be right on the edge. There we go, okay, cool. Nice, oh, that's so cool. Sick. Okay, that's so cool. That is, that <laughs> All right. Okay, so we've finally narrowed down like a six foot radius of the exact range of how far our LoRa module works. And as you can see, when I trigger this, uh, sometimes it works. There we go. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And that's just how far we are. All right, so I just talked with our receiver end and it sounds like we're at roughly high 90s, low 100s for our signal strength. And this is about as far as we can get. Any further and we don't have reception, this is roughly a mile. Now, granted we're line of sight, but we're still downtown. There's a bunch of buildings in the way. I am so impressed. What's interesting is that we've been able to use a module that doesn't rely on 2.4 gigahertz or cellular. So really the applications for this go beyond just triggering a flash from really far away. Well, as you can see, we got some interesting results from our tests, but hopefully this answers a lot of questions regarding how practical this technology is in an urban setting. This has been so cool. I've never worked with LoRa modules before, so to be able to do a practical test with these and get some pretty interesting results has been fascinating. Besides, there's some really interesting applications for LoRa modules beyond just Mesh-tastic. You could set up your own set of nodes and transmit and receive information across long distances without relying on Wi-Fi or cellular services. And I think that's really cool. Because after all, we're not here to really just see if a light can turn on and off from far away. We really want to see what are these technologies and how applicable are they. Thanks for watching this episode of Nullbyte. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more.